What's going on, Fort Worth family? It's the kid, Big Boss Fable. I'm back with the Rare Abba interview, part two, man. Band member songs, Mamma Mia, and the World Tour from the Seven New Spotlight channel. So at this point, we're getting some, you know, interviews, essentially getting some questions answered by um, Bjorn, Benny, and uh, Agnetha. Where's Aunt Frida? Why is she in this? She, well, she didn't want to do it. She didn't want to participate. I don't know. Uh, this is pretty cool. I don't think I've ever really seen them speak, you know, um, at this point in time. This was originally shot in 2017, though. So, yeah, man, without further ado, like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, at Fort Worth Fabian. It's the road to a million, man. Peace and love to everybody rocking with the channel. Check out my ABBA playlist. You can find a link to that down in, in the description. Donations are also open if you're feeling generous, man. Links to my PayPal, my Cash App information down below in the description. Let's get it. I'd like to apologize on behalf of our nation's obsession with your bottom. Oh, it was not only there. <laughs> <laughs> well... It could be worse things. <laughs> <laughs> How did you feel about that at the time? You were, I guess, one of the biggest sex symbols in the world. We didn't think about that so much, actually. Neither Frida or I, but we were, of course, were very aware of when we were on the stage. I love when it's natural like that, to where people just assume you as a sex symbol because you attract you attractive, you know what I'm saying? Like she said, they weren't thinking about that. So that wasn't their focus, man, whatever, man. But a lot of people, when they find out that they're a sex, a sex symbol, and I'm talking about artists specifically, when they talk, find out they're a sex symbol, they flaunt that, they, they, their shows go overboard, they get more risque, they're showing more cleavage, whatever it is, man. They're just doing a whole lot more sexually like advanced you know, um, shows, performances, and it's like, chill out. You don't got to do all that, bro. That's why, I like, obviously sex sells, bro, but it's like... You don't gotta overdo it. Just be yourself. And I, I really like the fact that she said, man, I wasn't worried about that. I'm just doing music, like, you know, like. That thought that we were something special. That gave us a very nice feeling, really. And also the fact that we were so different. Mama, 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 mama. Did you take drugs or alcohol or anything like that? No drugs. No drugs. No, drugs. <laughs> no, not clean, but we don't take any drugs. <laughs> like all big stars, Abba had what's known as a rider. What kind of question is that? <laughs> a list of requirements for each of their Australian shows. And it confirms they certainly weren't teetotalers. Two bottles of French dry champagne, well chilled. Two bottles of Perrier water, one bottle of scotch. Johnny What's Walker that, the label. Half bottle of Negrita rum, 10 bottles of Coca-Cola, tea, coffee, milk, lemon, sugar, cups, glasses, and spoons. <laughs> Hello, Sydney! I'll tell you one thing, you make us forget the rain. Tell me about the Sydney concert, if you remember it. It was pouring rain. And you mm -hmm. and the other members of the band risked your lives for us. Yes, it's not uh, easy to stand on a stage outside with so many people and just say, we, we can't do it. People were just shouting and screaming and having a good time, even though it was pouring down. Everyone had umbrellas, 30, 40,000 umbrellas at the same time going up. That was fantastic. Sheesh. It was just so loud and it was like electricity in the air, which was probably from the storm that was happening as well, but <laughs> <laughs> I think it was coming directly from the people. The hype of it was just amazing. Roxanne Dixon was eight years old when she, her mother and sisters made it to the front row of ABBA's stormy Sydney concert. People were shocked just how loud ABBA were, a real rock concert. And it was just, as soon as that music started, you know, the heart just went. My mum says she started, as soon as she heard the music, she started grinning and that grin did not leave her face the whole time. <laughs> so, I think mm. everyone was just in shock. Australia's obsession with ABBA continued in Melbourne. 
Fans brought the city centre to a standstill for a town hall welcome. They were different to anything else that was around at the time. They were so beautiful. The music is just so fantastic. The songs are so catchy. And they were so brilliantly done that they seemed like really simple pop songs, but they weren't. So I think that's partly why the music grabbed everyone so much. Even though it seemed like really light-hearted pop music, there was something, you know, a lot more serious underneath. What do you think it is about ABBA that has so captivated Australians? Well, apart from their brilliant music, because their music is brilliant, and I think that with Australians, they could sense uh, that, like Aussies are, they were down to earth, you know? Yeah. Absolutely down to earth, you know? How does that feel as an artist to see thousands and thousands of people waving and screaming? Mostly you're humbled by it. The fact that this is actually happening and, and they're out there because of you and because of something that we had done. As ABBA headed home, fans lined the road and crowded into the airport devastated to see them go, and the feeling was mutual. I want to jog your memory here, so hopefully it'll play. Goodbye. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's when we are going to leave Australia that time. Uh -huh. So I remember we felt very, very sad. And we wanted so much to, to grab their hands, or so, but we had to leave this wonderful country. So that was sad. Goodbye. Dang, looked like she was tearing up even talking about it. But that's wild, man. Australia, salute to Australia, man. You know what I mean? They show love, they show love, you know? It's crazy, I've never really heard about what other artists had a breakout or had a breakout moment in Australia, so to speak, or that was Australia leveraged them to, you know, basically break out to the world. You know, because you hear about artists going to the UK all the time, England, stuff like that, but Australia, it's different, man, it's different. Shout out to all my Australians out there, man. Much love. You wanted to kind of give more to the fans. Mm. We had such a good time as well. Yeah. So we didn't want to go back. Over a 10-year career, ABBA became one of the most successful bands in the world. Catchy choruses and upbeat music delivered hit after hit, more than 380 million records sold. But the songs were only part of the package. Tell me about those clothes. Uh, they were very, very special. Yeah. And when you're looking back, it maybe can look very strange. It was not very comfortable <laughs> sometimes <laughs> with the high heels, but... When ABBA was on stage, they owned it. But in truth, they all much preferred to write and record music at home in Sweden. Jeez. Beautiful. Thank you for the music is very special to hey, you. Hey, still got you were you were very heavily pregnant. Yeah, I was pregnant and um, and the doctor said that she she's not allowed to push too much. I mean, you have really to work when you record and, and going up on high tones. So I had to be very careful. So they fixed like a chair, but a bed. Yeah. So I could near, be lying down and I, I, ne I nearly lie down singing that song. Wow. Yeah. You were actually reclining while singing Thank You for the Music. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was special <laughs> with the stomach. Nine months after the Australian tour, and I want to hear her sing now. I'm sure she still got it, you know. But Nietzsche and Bjorn had their second child, Christian. Then the following year, Frida and Benny were married. The band was riding high. 
it's quite wonderful to be able to to work with what you enjoy most and to have success with it. ABBA never returned to Australia. They toured the world again in 1979, but the closest they came was Japan. Like the Japanese people are very open and very Damn. free and we feel, make us feel good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But the pop star life was taking its toll on everyone. What is it like to experience that extraordinary level of fame where everybody in the world, it seems, loves you? How can you explain that? It's so difficult. You, you start, you get used to it, I think. But um, I think you, you never think about or people don't think about that there are backsides as well. And for example, to being recognized everywhere. Do you think that once Agneta had, had children, that changed everything, didn't it? Because more than all the fame, it was motherhood that she wanted. Both of us, we, I wanted fatherhood, she wanted motherhood. And we could combine it, which we did in a good way, I think, uh, by not touring so much. You know, so we traveled less, I think, than, than any other group at that time. I think that it's a bit of a... Ooh, see? I just did a documentary on the Carpenters, and it seemed like their downfall is they, like, overbooked them. They toured way too much, you know? These guys were, like, they put it on a back burner, obviously, because they have family and stuff, kids. So they slowed down the touring life. And a social life on tour. Uh, you just eat, sleep, and go on stage and nothing more. And it kills creativity in a way that I don't like. One day when I woke up in a Europe tour, tour I started to think, where am I? In which city? And it's terrible, you know? The papers recently have been full of stories that you're going to split <laughs> eventually. Uh, you're not. No. <laughs> Whoa. Ben and Bjorn has written so many good songs. Thank and you. Thank you. Yes, but you should know about that by now. <laughs> well, you never said that. <laughs> OK, so it's the first time. But soon enough, the pressures did tear the two couples apart. Both Dang. marriages ended in divorce. But the band stayed together for the music, and in a difficult time, created some of their most memorable songs. Of all of those songs, which is your favourite? OK. Uh, my favourite song is The Winner Takes It All. I think it's super, really. The Winner Takes It All. Mm. People liked to think that that was about your relationship. It was uh, right after our divorce and, and it was a bit uh, sensitive for all of us. It must have been difficult to sing at the time. Yeah, it was a bit moving, so to say. It was inspired by the pain of your breakup, wasn't it? Um, deep down, of course. Was it difficult to watch Agneta sing that song at that time in your life? That was kind of cleansing. That, the, that it, it, it was the other thing, other way around. I had written the words, she sang them, and it was somehow the right thing to do, and, and, and to then release it and, you know, let the world know. It was some, something deeply symbolic in that. In 1982, ABBA broke up, believing they and their music would soon be forgotten. We were just happy that we were, we did so good while we were at it, you know. No one expected this to sort of continue. None of us. Yeah. When ABBA finished, you thought maybe the songs would be around for another year or so? And... Yeah, something like maybe a year, two, yeah. maybe. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. It's kind of the thing about being in a group. There's so many personalities, there's so many visions, emotions, people dealing with different stuff in their personal life. And they tend to just, slowly but surely go their separate ways, no matter, like, it's a great moment, obviously, in the success, but the reality is it's not going to sustain over, like, 
15, 20 years. Like, so 10 year run is a good run, honestly. A lot of people can't make it five years in the game, let alone three, you know? But um, I feel like that's, you know, we see it differently with solo artists because it's just them and maybe a team around them and, you know, they can move a bit differently. Yeah. That would be it. ABBA's music provided the soundtrack for a little movie called Muriel's Wedding that became a comedy classic. PJ Hogan, who uh, directed Muriel's Wedding, yeah, he really dogged you to get that music, didn't he? he yeah, well, they had to ask a couple of times because we were not sure. It's a great film. I really like that film. Which is also another thing that helped keeping us, ABBA, alive. It was enough to get even the most tone deaf singing along. So when you're near me, darling, can't you hear me? It's a mess. This. You like really? You gonna sing? Nah. Let's see what you got. <laughs> in 1999, Benny and Bjorn's own stage musical, Mamma Mia, hurled ABBA back into the charts again. It became one of the highest grossing musicals, soundtracks and movies of all time. And now there's a sequel underway. And it's a new generation that, Ooh. again, that knows about us. And thank God I'm so grateful for this. But for all their ongoing success, it's rare to see all four together, like they were at this opening of the Mamma Mia restaurant in Sweden last year. And last June, the unthinkable. For the first time since the end of ABBA, Frida and Agneta joined in song to surprise Benny and Bjorn. That was very, very nice of them to do that, yeah. Did you ever think that would happen? No, it surprised me that they wanted to do that, but it was really heartwarming. And now the news ABBA fans never thought they'd hear. Sounds like ABBA's getting back together and working on a tour. I think in the beginning of 2019, there will be a show, a live show, uh, with band, with a real band and dancers and, and the set design and lights and sound and all of it. Everything is live, apart from us, who are there as either holograms or in, in, in an avatar format. You can oh. get an idea of what it may look like from the holograms at the ABBA Museum in Stockholm. We will use the recordings wow. from our the live hologram. performances mm -hmm. or from the records, mm -hmm. as well as with the band playing. You know, so the band would play, we could have the vocals from the records of the live performances. The band would play and we'd put it together. It, it takes, uh, takes a little work, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to be fine. I think it's going to be great. Will all four members have some contribution into how that, that project yes. happens? we already did. Ah, you've all come together and yeah. worked it out. Yeah, and we will continue to do so. There's a lot of work, you know, from just deciding what songs are we going to play, Wow. Which order will it be? Wow. Ever are going to tour again, but it's with a difference, with a magical difference. So I'll use the old saying, do yourself a favor. Yeah, when you got that many bangers, which one to two from? Which one? Which one? Ever and check it out. It's the first time the four members <sighs> have collaborated since the band broke up and their millions of fans are beyond excited. Oh, the digital ABBA, we cannot believe it. It's the most exciting thing ever. Apart from the fact all four of them are working together on it, it's going to be like being at, a, at an ABBA concert, which is what everyone wants. It's gonna be spectacular. Very excited. And we've got another surprise for Roxanne. Roxanne, how are you going? Wouldn't it be good to talk to one of the members of the band? It would be amazing to talk to one of the members of the band. <laughs> and I'm so jealous that you are. Well, Roxanne, <clears throat> say hello to Benny. Oh, my God! <laughs> 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 
Hello. Hello, Benny. Hello. Hello. So where are you? I'm in Australia, in Queensland, at home. <laughs> well, I haven't been there for a while. I don't know. What has it been? Forty years or something? I don't know. When was it? Seventy-seven? Yeah. Yes, 1977. Yes. <laughs> Boy, dang. Yeah, I'm getting. So you're telling me that these guys went out to Australia for that? It was a show, right? And they never went back. Not even on their own leisure. Not one of them ever went back to Australia just to visit. That's wild. He said it's been 40 years. Thing old. Bye nice talking to you too, okay? Okay. See you later. Okay, bye for now. Bye for now, bye. Benny. Bye. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Do you pinch yourself every day? Yeah, almost. Almost every day, because there's always someone, you know, who comes up <laughs> and, and says, um, thank you for the music. How do you begin to fathom how many people have been affected by your music? I don't know, but I think it's a lot, really. And it's so spread, it's so all over the world. But it makes you very humble. And I'm very thankful that I have been able to do this. It means a lot. Jeez, man. That right there is the Rare Abba interview. Band members on songs, Mamma Mia, and the World Tour. Yay! I'm glad I got through that one, man. Um, yeah, that's Abba once again. <laughs> I feel like I thoroughly know their story now. I've seen so many like behind the scenes and stuff like that. But hey, no Fred, I do have more music reactions on the way. I need live performance recommendations, so comment below. I know you guys commented on a lot of previous videos with recommendations. Um, uh, so I, I do reference those videos, you know? So don't feel the need to be like, hey man, I told you this. And, and I, I do reference those videos. I go back and look through the comments and then jot down all you guys' recommendations um, to put them in a list to start knocking them out. So today I got more ABBA coming up. So just stay tuned, stay engaged, man. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter at Fort Worth Fabian. It's the road to a million. If you're feeling generous, you can donate. Link for PayPal, um, Cash App details are in the description below. Please check out my ABBA playlist. I have a link down below for my ABBA playlist. You can check out all the songs and reactions I've done to ABBA thus far, man. So peace, love to everybody. Stay safe, man. God bless. We're out of here.